Tonight, we are talking about a real-life succession battle, unscripted, the epic battle for a media empire and the Redstone family legacy. It outlines the final years of Viacom founder Sumner Redstone's reign at the media giant. The authors point, point out this story is more common than you'd think, writing this. The drama that unfolded may have occurred at Viacom and CBS, but the recent drumbeat of greed, backstabbing, plotting, and betrayal at the upper levels of American business and society has hardly been confined to one or two companies or one wealthy family and its hangers-on. The co-author, James B. Stewart, joins me now. This story is unbelievable. And for the average person out there, they don't know who Sumner Redstone is, but they see shows like Succession, and they say, is this really how powerful empires and families work? And the truth is, based on this book, it's so much more twisted it's, than the TV show. It's even stranger. I, and I love Succession, but this goes way beyond Succession. And, you know, Sumner Redstone in his heyday, uh, Forbes estimated his fortune at over $14 billion. He was arguably the most powerful media and entertainment mogul in America, in the world. Um, and yet, as he aged, he physically deteriorated, he mentally deteriorated. And you see that even though he's a billionaire, we would think with the best lawyers, advisors, caregivers, the grifters, the hangers on, they moved in and started to try to separate him, him from his money. What made you decide to write this? Well, we started with uh, my co-author, Rachel Abrams, had been writing a lot about the Me Too movement. She won a, 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 was part of a team that won a Pulitzer for the Harvey Weinstein Ah, Les Moonves. And then we were looking at Les Moonves, who was ousted for this. So it started kind of as the Me Too movement meets the corporate boardroom, which is kind of my traditional bailiwick. But it didn't take long for us to discover that, yes, it was that, but it's a much bigger story. It's a, it's a family saga. It is a succession drama. And it's also a story about a very complicated, wealthy father and his daughter who was drawn into this struggle. And both Rachel and I were struck that in certainly a nonfiction, there aren't that many stories that explore the relationship between a father and a daughter. Fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, yes. But this is really a, an amazing story of a father and a daughter. We keep telling our audience it's twisted, it's sinister, but what was most shocking to you? Well, there are a number of these, but um, certainly the ability of some of these people to separate uh, a, an aging mogul from his wealth. There were two women, you know, glamorous women who managed to move into the house with him. And, you know, elder abuse is a big problem in our society. And here you see it writ large. They managed to separate him from the family, say his family didn't love him, cut him off. They walked away with over $150 million of his money, which we documented. But in part because this man was extremely sexual and had more sexual interest and, and proclivities and, and wild interest in these very last years of his life, where it seemed like he was happy to pay over tens of millions of dollars if you were happy to get naughty with him. It was, it was really outrageous behavior. And, you know, part of it was no doubt his aging and his infirmity. But you see here, another thing that I found so shocking was the level of, of sexist behavior, um, of offensive attitudes towards women, not just from him, but was, it was pervasive in the upper levels of CBS. And we, thanks to some wonderful confidential sources, we got this treasure trove of documents, emails, texts. Somebody said, no CEO is ever going to text Dan after reading this. Because they, they gave these unvarnished comments, and they, they're really shocking in their attitudes towards women after the Me Too movement. And when Sherry Redstone, his daughter along with the Redstone family, was the biggest shareholder in the company. And yet the directors, they're saying things like, oh, who cares about these sexual assault allegations? And this is a direct quote, we all did this. Another one wrote an email saying, I don't care if a hundred more women come forward accusing Les Moonves of sexual assault. He's our leader. We're going to stand behind him. I mean, and it just kind of goes on from there. Again, a board dominated by aging white males. This is after Harvey Weinstein. They did not care anything about that. Well, Les Moonves is a thing of the past. Obviously, uh, that company is, is very different today. But, you know, in our last segment, we talked about Fox News. Right now we're talking about Sumner Redstone. When we think about these hugely powerful people, right, e even in Elon Musk, did this project open your eyes to how powerful these individuals are and how their personalities can influence society and the media we consume. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, this has probably been going on for decades, but you, what you see is a sense of entitlement that these people with great power and great money, 
the norms that the other people adhere to are just out the window, and particularly the sexual norms. Now, maybe I should have known this was going on, but their, you know, their libidos sort of like take over. They, they feel entitled to help themselves to whatever impulse that they want to act on. And by the way, they get away with it. You see in the story the enablers around them, the people who knew what was going on, who cover up this, who look the other way, or who say, we don't really care. And I think that's not just in media companies, although you know Fox News has had its own major problems, but even at a company like McDonald's, they've, they've had scandals in the CEO suite. I think the Me Too movement is finally bringing a lot of this into the open.